All right, gamers, welcome in to Retro Timed. And in this video today, I wanted to talk about a little bit of my history in video gaming and where I started as a video gamer. So let's get into breaking this down so I can show you where I started from. Right. So I'm going to try to break it down as I go as to what consoles came into my life in order. Um, so to start, I had the original Nintendo system. My family had it. Um, I'm not sure how we got it. I was a little too young to remember, but I do remember playing Super Mario on this thing. Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt. Um, that's about all I had when I first had it. And then later on down the line, my cousin actually had a, one of these. And, um, he had more, but I think it was later on down after the N Super Nintendo came out. So, this was my very first system. Um, I do remember having this very well. And, um, I only had, like, one game, so I didn't get to play much outside of that one particular game. But I do remember having the Mario Duck Hunt, um, games together. And, um... I, I enjoyed Duck Hunt to a certain level, but I think I enjoyed Mario more. I remember playing Mario a lot more back then. And there was a spot, this like glitch or something. And I don't know where it is anymore, but you go into the, in the original game, you go to a certain part where you hit a block on top. And then there's this green blob that just comes out. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't drop down or anything, it just, it comes out of this box and then goes and then disappears. And I have no clue to this day what that glitch is. But I remember it, and I don't know if anybody else remembers it. If you do, put it in the comment section. Now, let's get into uh, the next one. This one here was my next one, alright? So, this was, this came after the Nintendo system for me. Um... I remember having one of these. I don't remember it very well, very, very well. I guess because the games weren't as intriguing on the system. Because when you look at an Atari compared to a Nintendo, Atari was just a much more different system. But it still did the job. And it came out in like the 1970s, I want to say. So the games on it were way different. But this was officially the start of the video game industry for all of us this is where i'll start it from nowadays if you go and play you there's games on it that you might not even a lot of the games on it a lot of people might not like now for me there's a few on here that i would go back and play um like i would play pong still just because pong is you know relatively fun but it's better with two people because you're actually hitting a ball back and forth as opposed to like playing by yourself so, and yes, this had the capabilities of doing two-player, um, but yeah, I definitely remember playing this second in my gaming history, so, um, it just, I remember how difficult this thing was to even set up, because the cables in it were just, like, there were so many cables to it. It sort of reminds me a bit like the Sega Genesis, which we'll get into here shortly, but yes, this is my second gaming system ever that I owned and then after that there were other gaming systems that came out along the way that I owned and I'm gonna keep talking about here so let's get into it all right so here's the third one for me now this was where gaming actually took off for me I played a bunch of games I played Sonic the Hedgehog 2 I played um Road Rash I played uh, a racing game a very a very it was unique about uh, about its time because it was kind of a 3D racing game. Um, they kind of pushed the graphics that way. Um, Sonic Spinball, a um, couple other Sonic games. I'm trying to think, football games, like sort of like there was this mutant type sports football game that I can't still remember what it is to this day. If I ever find it, I'm gonna probably end up like trying to like see if it's on a Nintendo Switch just to have it because it was, it was one of those great games that I played growing up. Um, just a lot of great different titles here that 
I really, really enjoyed on this game. And this is when gaming really started for me. This is what gave me the taste of what being a gamer was actually like. And um, at this time, I, at this time, I really, really like what was on the Sega and me as a kid. I just enjoyed it. Um, putting it together is a pain in the ass, you see, because you don't have the standard red, blue, yellow, uh, yellow, blue, green, or something like that cables to plug into the TV at the time. Um, even now, we don't have that. It's a lot easier than what it was, but you just, you have all these, this, this right here was like my top, you know, memorable gaming experience. Um, yeah, there was a lot of played on this. Um, and I specifically remember this one time, and this is going into a family story, but this is a little bit of an example that I had with this, that, uh, that I had with this experience with this, uh, console. And it was, um, basically... My mom had rented a game from the um, from the uh, from the video game store, and my sister, being my sister, my sister would cry for stuff and get whatever the hell she wanted. That's how my sister is, and that's how she always has been. So I'm like sitting there playing this game, and my sister's like, "I want to play Song of the Hedgehog." I was like, "I don't want to go back and play that because mom just rented this for us, so therefore you we can't." And I got mad at her for it, and my mom came in. She got mad at me for getting mad at my sister, saying we, sh we should continue to play the game she just ran. And I'm thinking to myself at the time, why would I not keep playing this game we rented when you are telling me that we have to go back and play a game that we already own? Isn't the purpose of running a game to play the game until you return it? But she didn't see that that way. She let my sister kind of like step on her, do whatever she wanted. It's unfortunate, but that was one of my nostalgia memories. A very poor memory, but there was a lot besides that that I really, really liked about the Sega games. But uh, for me, Sega was where all my gaming started. And I remember my cousin and me, we'd play baseball till like 4 a.m. in the morning, and we'd get yelled at for that, too. So it just became, uh, you know, one of those consoles that I remember playing in the early 90s. So, all right, let's get into the next one. Alrighty, so this was my actual next console after the sega after the sega genesis um at least from what i remember now if i was to reverse time i you know i'd probably remember it differently but i remember having this one next and so the thing about this is this was my first experience of gaming on the go out of like the main consoles um and i did have sonic the hedgehog on this as well um I don't remember how difficult it was to play it on 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 a Game Gear, but I freaking love this thing. And my problem is the batteries would die too quick, so I'd end up like having to, uh, you know, plug it into the wall and have the charger with me, and keep playing it that way. And I would play it so much, and it died. Uh, but the thing is, my grandmother bought it for me one year, and I still I don't really know what happened to it. Um, I wish I did. Because me as a kid, I was just very, like, I wasn't very careful about my thing, so I it could have just got, it could have, you know, got uh, traded off or something. But I definitely remember having this one, and this was a lot of fun to have on a go. Um, handheld-wise, gaming handheld-wise, this was a lot of fun. I had very few games for this. I had Sonic the Hedgehog, and then I remember playing this one. Really weird Seven Up game where the back in the nineties the guy with the, the red guy with the glasses and the feet. I had I was playing that. I don't know if that was mine. I think that was somebody's selection of games they had. But I remember having this and playing a couple games on this. So all right. So this is the next system I had. It was a handheld system. Um, I had. I had transitioned over to this. Uh, my mom got me one of these for my for Christmas, I believe. She got my sister one, and she got me one. So, um, we both kind of had one. I, you know, I really, really like this because back in the day when this came out, I would take it to school with me. I would uh, like, I would literally like play it on the go because it was a uh, better. It would just for some reason. It wouldn't it wouldn't drain the batteries as fast. Um, that was the mem more memorable experience of it. It still had a uh, charger port which you plugged in, 
you kept it alive that way. Um, and I remember specifically, this was around, this was before Pokemon even came out. I remember specifically playing Donkey Kong on this. Um, I think I had like one other, two other games. We didn't have much on these consoles. Um, but they were affordable back then. So that's why, like, I was, you know, they, I was given these consoles for, like, holiday gifts or birthday gifts. But, they, I, you know, I really, really, I really didn't get much for games. I'd have, like, probably one game for each console. And I really got games during, like I said, my Sega Genesis era. But, like, this here, I had, I had Donkey Kong, and, and I forget what I had, but, I remember playing Donkey Kong. My sister had Donkey Kong, and it was just, it was just a really, really fun game. I really like Donkey Kong, so if you do own one of these, I suggest getting Donkey Kong for it, um, and playing through it. Um, besides that, um, these are great to have. I'm trying to think about what else I have, but nothing else comes to mind. I'm sure. I think I have. I think I had Super Mario Land or something like that at the time, which. For me, the experience was a little bit more different than this. But this was my experience with the Game Boy Pocket. Very little, as you can see. This one, for me, was the system I wanted the most at the time. I remember seeing everything for this. I was like, oh my god, that thing looks amazing. I want one. And I didn't have... My mom didn't get me it right away. But I eventually ended up getting the console. And the day I got it, I was just so excited. I was so happy that, like, I I even, I even started crying. And my mom was like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm just happy, that's all. So I started crying over getting this. But, like, for me, I didn't get a game I wanted at first. I do remember I had, like, Wave Racing at first, which is not something that I wanted. And the problem is, like, everybody was around me trying to persuade me. And I was like, I, rem I think I was, like, selecting a game at the time and the problem was i didn't get to select the game i let the family kind of select it because it was just like for me i thought about like well what if, what is everybody else going to play with me and so it came down to wave race i didn't enjoy the i didn't enjoy the experience experience as much um i kind of played it for like a couple of days and just let it die down because i was like this is actually not as fun as i thought it was going to be that's what happens when you get stuff further than yourself if you're sharing, Wave Race 64 would have been a good would have been a good bet. But outside of sharing and having the console to yourself, you were better off getting Super Mario 64 or a games as such. I remember I'd go to the video game store and just rent games and then see how they were and then end up like there were times I'd try to go and get like a game just to experience it to see if I liked it before I actually went out and bought it. Because Back in the day, my mom was not able to afford games, so what little games I did have, they really meant a lot to me, and I enjoyed them for what they were, but I had, like, a co very few games. I remember having Wave Race 64. I remember having, we somehow, I forgot, I, I don't know how, but we got Mario Kart. I think my cousin ended up getting Mario Kart. Um, my cousin got a lot of games, um, but I remember... Getting Mario 64, and then I got uh, Pokemon Stadium. I didn't like Pokemon Stadium as much. And then I remember my cousin moved in, and my grandmother, along with his father, and along with my uncle, and I pretty much, my uncle would get him games, like, every single week. Like, not every single week, but every single time a game came out that he really wanted, he would ask his dad, and his dad would go and get the game for him. He worked at, like, a store or something like that, if I can remember. And he, I remember seeing Super Smash Brothers for this. And I was, we played, we played a good bit of Mario Party. But I remember playing Super Smash Brothers for this. And, um, I saw the commercial and I'm like, oh, man, that looks awesome. I And then my cousin, when he woke up, I told him, I was like, I just saw a game on the TV where, where Mario was fighting Pikachu or something like that. And it was it was Super Smash Brothers. And I was like... I tried to I tried to tell him about it. And I couldn't explain it. And then later on he saw it. We ended up getting it. And it was like one of the best ex gaming experiences I had. In multiplayer mode. But eventually we got Mario Party. We got Mario Kart 64 and all that. So I had access to 
a lot of games through my cousin. Now, as for me, I didn't have very many games. I had very little games, but every game I had or did play, it was through him. And I didn't really own it, but the experiences were there of me getting to play. So, I did get to play. I remember almost beating Mario 64, and and I asked him, I was like, Hey, can you beat this for me? Because I'm having trouble beating the final boss. So, he tr he tricked me into believing he be beat the boss. He's like, okay, I'll take care of this. You just have to go outside the room so I can actually beat this for you. And he made me believe that he beat it. That he beat it. So, I asked him, I was like, I was like, what happened? Did you win? And then later on, he told me he didn't win. I was like, oh, all right. But, yeah, um, I played that game through and through until I got, like, a 100 stars because I wanted to beat it, and I remember being stuck at the end boss, end Bowser, and not being able to beat it. So, I did, I did almost uh, completely beat the main story back then. I just didn't remember I did it, but now to this day, I think about it. Yes, Mario 64 was probably one the one game I actually came close to beating. So, let's get into the next one. So, this game here, I remember after I got my Nintendo 64, um, this game here is very nostalgic for me because my grandmother got it for me, okay? And it's because they knew, my family knew how much I loved Pokemon at the time. So, Back in the day when I was a little kid, Pokemon was like the most awesome thing. And I remember still to this day, Pokemon was just awesome when it first started. It was like, it was something I can't explain. Even the artwork back then for like the covers and all that, it was just remotely different. And now you look at it and it's not the same. And I, I can't get past how great this first part of Pokemon was. Like if we were to go back and just reboot it, we could never do it the same. This was a standing, standalone, like, early 90s thing for me. It has the nostalgia there. I remember opening so opening this up on Christmas Eve morning one morning and finding out what this was. I was like, <gasps> am I, like, everything, ju I just got totally excited. And I had, like, the, I had, like, one of the coolest Game Boys on the block at this time. And that's because my grandmother went out and got this full package for me. And... You know, it's cool to know that I was, like, when I was a little kid, they really, really paid attention to what I like, and I ended up getting this. Now, I wasn't, I didn't think anything special myself, but I went back on Christmas, after Christmas break, and just letting everybody know, letting my friend know at the time, I was like, oh, I got, I got the Game Boy with the Pokemon Yellow, so this was a, quite an experience for me, and then after I beat Pokemon Yellow, the main storyline, I went and played the other ones. I never really caught all the Pokemon, but I still, till this day, remember playing these Pokemon games and how great they were back then. And it, you know, I still wish I knew where this was, too. A lot of my gaming consoles and all that are, like, they're somewhere within history. I don't know what happened to them, and I wish I did. Um, unfortunately, um, I would have no way getting access to figuring out where these are anymore. Um... Yeah, I had yellow, red, blue, and then I had like a couple other games outside, I believe. But red, blue, and yellow were my main games for this. Um, I don't know why I felt the need to get all three if I'm just gonna if I was just playing a story. And I guess back then I was like, I'm gonna try to catch them all, and I had the intentions. But after a while, I got bored. So after this, we got into yellow, silver. I mean, gold, silver, and crystal. So I had those three as well. I had my dad take me to get Crystal with a with an instruction guide on it, so the guide was in it. The whole fat the whole package deal was there. Um, but yeah, this was another memorable console I had in my in in my life growing up. So um, let's get into the next one. All right, so yes, I had Game Boy Advance at the time, um, and I. I remember playing this with some classmates in school. I don't know why, but I do remember playing this with classmates in school. And um, I re remember specifically playing the Mario Kart game in the screen with the classmates at school. I don't know why we, we, were, we were just able to play it. But like in homeroom, 
everybody had their Game Boy and we would all get along and we would all genuinely just start playing the Game Boy Advance. And it was just one of those one of those things that I remember playing and I ha I don't remember if I had much else beside this because it's like very limited to games, so I didn't get too many I didn't get access to very many games at the time. Um and this was one of those consoles that, you know, I had for like a little while I enjoyed and Mario Kart was the most memorable experience because we we literally sat down and we connected the we connected the Mario we connected the Game Boy Vances together and we play Mario Kart in homeroom. I don't understand how we did that or why, but like we were allowed to play video games. I had like the coolest homeroom, so I don't know. Um but yeah. So this was my next console, the Nintendo GameCube. Alright. And um the Nintendo GameCube was beyond its time back then. I wanna say that. You know, we you know, going back to the 64, um, I want to say this was a, this was a bit advanced compared to the 64, and I missed out on some of my stories for 64, but there's a lot to the 64 that I remember. Um, but the GameCube was the next step up for me in video gaming. Um, I stuck with Nintendo most of the time, um, because that's what my family knew and um you know i didn't even i didn't really even know this came out until one birthday i ended up getting it and my mom just like my mom got mad at me about something and i was mad at my mom at the time and she just drops this right in front of me and i'm like she's like happy birthday and she was like fucking pissed and i was i i don't normally make my mom mad, but for some reason my mom would get mad at me. I was like the better child. There were moments I did piss my mom off, but it's because something I was mad about something that happened with my sister, and she was always unfair to me and like in some ways due to my sister. Like I have a lot, I had a lot of experience with that. Uh, but this was my next console step up, um, and I remember getting Sonic the Hedgehog with this. I remember the first time I plugged this thing in, I didn't understand it. I was like, I asked my cousin, I was like, hey, can you come help me plug this into the screen? And and he just showed me, and it was pretty simple. And then I got it up and running, and I started playing Sonic. Uh, I forget the name of the Sonic game. But it was the one where you go downhill on a snowboard, and you just run into everything. And you're being destructive, but you're still going through the city. I sat, and I played hours on that. And then I got a bunch of other games. I got, like, I got a bunch of wrestling games. I got like a bunch of like other games that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and yeah, these were there was a lot of different games on this. But uh, and then Nintendo GameCube was the next step up for me. Now, I didn't play. I didn't have many multiplayer. Like I didn't have very many. Like I had like probably one friend that I played GameCube with on from time to, from time to time. And my cousins, but I didn't have like a whole bunch of people playing these games with me because I knew like my mom was very weird about me knowing other people for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, Nintendo GameCube was just, it was just a memorable experience. Um, when I moved in with my dad and I had other games, like I had Tony, the one Tony Hawk game, I had Mario Kart Double Dash, which still to this day, I don't think Mario Kart Double Dash was even a good game, but that's just my opinion and my thoughts. Um, I had so many different titles for this. I think over the course of time for each console, now that I think about it, I did get other titles, but it wasn't anything, like, super new. Like, I didn't go out and buy new games, uh, every single time they came out. Because back then, I wasn't really paying attention that much. And, um, now, I kind of just, now I know more to pay attention to it in case things are coming out. But, yes, Nintendo GameCube was my next system so let's get into the next one all right and so this is my next one the xbox now this is when i actually got to play halo it took a little while but i had one of these and i had like a tetris game i had a star wars game i had a bunch of games on this that i really really sat down and just played at the time and for me the xbox was you know one of my more 
it wasn't really a memorable console, but I still had it, and I still enjoyed it. I never really owned a PlayStation, you're going to notice that throughout this. So, I actually always has owned this. Um, I had gaming experience from the PC, so I, a copy of Unreal Tournament came out for the Xbox, and I picked that thing up, and I remember my friend had an Xbox at the time. I went and hung out with him while uh, my girlfriend, like, lived at the time lived like very very close so um so i just you know i'd go and see her and then i'd turn around and i'd hang out with the buddy i had next to her and and we ended up playing like unreal tournament at the time just just having a blast playing for a player on a like screen because i was like i was like oh man you gotta play this you got i kept telling him i was like you gotta play this game this game is so badass and, uh, and back then, to me, Unreal Tournament was just a great game. I mean, Unreal Tournament had always been fun. It was my first, like, first-person shooter game that was multiplayer that you could play amongst friends. So that's probably why I really, really enjoyed that. I, besides GoldenEye, I did play GoldenEye, but, you know, Unreal Tournament was the game that really, really took off for me. Because my dad showed it to me, and I was like, oh, I actually like this. So I went out and bought Unreal Tournament for the... For the Xbox, and still to this day, I remember having that. I had a couple games, and there was one game called Staked, which I still don't understand the purpose of it. It was like it was very similar to Super Smash Brothers, but it was a lot different. It had its own character, it had its own characters, and all that, and just just a lot of like different, you know, different characters that were. You know, just just fun to play with, and um, yeah, I remember having this, and a just I still don't know what that game was about to this day, and who knows? Maybe I didn't open up some stuff. I was trying to figure it out, and I got no answers. I looked online and everything, and couldn't figure it out. But the Xbox library was a little bit different for me. Um, I had Halo one and two. And uh, a couple other games, but more of my games were on the GameCube. Because so I remember playing Soul Calibur at this time. And Wind Waker was a really, really incredible experience on the GameCube. But I had an Xbox, too. And it was just a lot of fun. So, I, I, I remember playing... My first experience online gaming with controller and Xbox was... I played it at um, somebody's house. And... The experience was just like, I remember getting murked in Halo, and it was just, it was like, it was a bunch of trash talk online of people just being like, well, I'm better than you, F off, and stuff like that, so, yeah, that, that was my, that was my, uh, experience with the Xbox, so. So, right after I got an Xbox, I also decided I went to ask for a, uh, PlayStation Slim 2, around the time that came out. Now, um, the only game I really had for it was, like, Final Fantasy X, and I had, like, Gungrave, and maybe some wrestling game, but, like, my experiences with the PlayStation consoles in general were never really good, and you'll see that throughout this video. Um, but yeah, I had owned, I owned a PlayStation 2 for a short time, for a little time, for a little while, actually, and, um, yeah, that's all I can really say about the PlayStation. So, at this time frame... I had the Xbox 360. I kind of drifted away from playing Nintendo for a little bit. I'm not going to lie. But my experience with the 360 was... This was a this was a, a, a console I literally went out and bought like a lot of games for. Um, because I had the money at the time. And um, I had the money. And it's because I was like working at this time. And um, I pretty much... I could afford to go get great games for this console. So, I remember having these, and um, I eventually, you know, had, I had, like, Halo 3 for this. Um, and then after Halo 3, I didn't play a Halo game for a while, so I played Halo once I moved in with an old roommate down here um, in Florida. But, like... I had an Xbox 360, and I played, like, a wrestling game, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. It was the worst wrestling game to this day, in my opinion. 
because the mechanics in it weren't allowing you to break up a hold, things like that. I love the 360, though. There were a lot of... Why is there no button on this controller? There's usually... There's an actual button that's supposed to be on this controller. I guess they didn't put it on here. But this is this was my Xbox 360. In fact, this is a different version of the 360. I had the original, like, Xbox White 360 version. But I remember I had one, and my cousin had one, and my cousin experienced what was known as the Red Ring of Death, which is, like, this right here would glow red, and you wouldn't be able to play games as the Red Ring of Death, so... When that happened, it was a sad day for all of us. Um, but I had, I had like, I had Saints Row on this thing. I had a bunch of different games that, like, I, they were good games at the time, but they're probably not games I'd ever remember. I'd actually consider going back to because they were just, they were games that were decent enough to play. Now, um, my most memorable experience with Guitar Hero was on this thing. Because you had every single Guitar Hero on on the console that came out. And um, if you go back in time, and for me the console war really started when Xbox, when Xbox um, was talked about and got released. I remember being, I remember being kind of mad that Xbox was about to release. And then I played the Xbox. I was like, oh, this isn't a bad experience. And um, I ended up like... I ended up really enjoying the Xbox in general, so I switched off to the 360. And um, I think my first experience of Xbox Live was on the 360. My main first experience. And I, you know, I had Halo on it. I had just, just random games that I remember getting. That I was like, oh, like I want to go out and play that. And I tried playing Call of Duty on this thing. After trying to play like a couple hours of Call of Duty, I just put it down. Because I was like, this isn't even fun. This isn't even fun to me. That's when that's when I found out I didn't like Call of Duty. And it never stuck out to me. It was one of those games that I saw that I just got entirely bored of. I played more. I played more Halo. And I played more um, Tetris on this thing. Because I did, I did still play Tetris before switching off to this. And the Xbox 360 was a step in the graphics department. So that's another reason why I ended up like playing really really liking the xbox at the time because it was just it had some beautiful graphics um it was the beginning of gears gears of war which we all should know about um and it just was the start of the actual for me this is when the video game community started actually taking off and started to be a hot topic and that's why we kind of are where we are today and um yeah, the Xbox 360 just really, really pushed it, and I really, really enjoyed the Xbox 360. That's why I own one right now, which I'm going to be getting games for. I can play games, but it's not its not something I want to play. I'm going to be looking into titles here soon. But yeah, Xbox 360 was my next console, so let's get... Alright, so this thing here, the Nintendo Wii, this was a very, very memorable console for me. Now, this was the, be this was the beginning of... A, I played a lot of Super Smash Brothers on this thing, and I'll get into explaining why. Uh, but this console here really, really hit the map for me when it came to a gaming experience, because it just it was one of those things that I had so many games on it that I remember in my I remember playing the heck out of Wii Boxing, Wii Bowling. Um, just things like that, that really made the experience enjoyable. And um, I remember waiting in line for Skyward Sword to come out because I would like I really really enjoyed the Zelda games, um, and I just I remember just playing the heck out of Mario Kart on this because the experience was so different. The the sensor in the in the the Wii controller was really really awesome i love playing mario kart that way it, just being able to turn the steering wheel and playing the games that way i also went out of my way and downloaded titles onto the wii and this is what made the wii cool you could buy digital versions of the game at a cheaper price so you could buy like the original super mario brothers on it i don't know if i bought it i can't remember if i bought anything i probably did but this led me back to playing nintendo games and enjoying Nintendo games 
and um, just all around having a blast. Wee bowling was another great sport. I remember, like, I remember there was, I remember had friends that were, that was a girl, and she really liked wee, wee bowling, and, you know, there was times I'd sit down and play wee bowling with some of the, some of the girls I'd hang out with, because they literally enjoyed it. They, they enjoyed playing wee bowling. I don't know what it was, but, you know, and it was just, it always made for a good time with everybody. Um, I don't know what it was about the Wii, but the Wii just was one of those, like, consoles that you actually took to a party. And you had a, you had a bunch of party games. Like, the 360 was a good party console for me, because we played Guitar Hero. But the Wii was ultimately, it became more of a thing where friends sat down and played the Wii with you for it. I don't know what it was, but... No, we was really pushed amongst like the society and everybody just enjoyed it like everybody had something similar to talk about that time but right now from then to now you can see that like the Wii was just a great console in general and like everybody enjoyed the heck out of it but yeah that's uh some of my story for the Wii now um let's get into the next one so again i wasn't a playstation fan but the, um I was with this girl at the time, and they love, her family loved the PlayStation. So we ended up eventually getting a PlayStation 3. And I remember we played um, a lot of games because her brother liked Harry Potter, um, you know, Lord of the Rings, Captain America, basic, like, games that, like, for his console that he would have liked now. He also is like Spider-Man. I think we played some Spider-Man games on it as well. But um, I was never in... Again, I was never into the PlayStation. I don't have a problem with it. I just... It's something I never like had a fascination for. And was like, oh man, I want... I want the PlayStation as a console. So that's why like throughout this whole video, you basically seen me like briefly talk about the PlayStation. So yeah, I owned a PlayStation 3 at one point. It wasn't like anything like super great but we still all played it and had fun so later on in the handheld sector i ended up having the nintendo 3ds um this had a wide variety of games on it and it hadn't retired since recently a few months back so the 3ds everybody still makes a big deal about this console and it's because it really really pushed the boundaries for gaming it was the first unique experience that pushed the 3D graphics. There was a couple of reasons why everybody really liked this. Um, and I had a lot of games on this. I played a decent amount. Um, my first experience with Hyrule Warriors was on the 3DS. I didn't like the experience on the 3DS. I'm sure, if I, you know, I'm sure if I played Hyrule Warriors on a different console, a bigger screen, I'd probably like it better. But like I remember playing Kid Icarus, The Uprising, X and Y Pokemon, uh, some Super Mario Land 3D, uh, just so many great games on this console. Even Mario Kart was top of the line, and just I remember having it. And actually, because I didn't have Wi-Fi, I ended up going to a McDonald's. And when you take it to a McDonald's or wherever you go, you'd have access to, like, having you know, sh Street Pass was a thing they had back then, where you you'd walk up past somebody else with the 3DS, and they'd have access to giving you, you know, a me they made within a system that would allow you to play games with it and all that. So, um, it just was a really enjoyable experience. The internet was, you know, a lot. The internet, you had the internet browser. And I, I being the person I am, like, well, I went and looked at, um, you know, porn back then. Because I was, like, a young guy and I was just like, hmm, I wonder if, thing, I wonder if this thing has access to it. Just being a weird, just being... You know, simply me. Um, it kept track of your steps. It did a lot of really awesome things. And the one thing I will say about the 3DS is it still stands as the console that I really, really liked out of the Nintendo uh, lineup. Um, the Wii was great, but for me in general, the 3DS was just a push in direction in a direction that I could never forget. Um, the access of playing games with a mini game, and um, you know, Animal Crossing. I played that on this. I played. I played uh, Link Between Worlds on this. There was uh, a couple of Zelda titles I had downloaded for free. 
But this was my favorite experience because it just pushed the boundaries for the video game, you know, the video game industry itself. And had cameras on it and everything. So it was like a mini personal computer, but like it was a lot different than having a actual phone at the time. Which the phones were always more powerful at the time. But the 3D, actually no, the 3DS I felt like was more powerful than a phone. Now that I correct myself. But yeah, the 3DS was a great item. The 3DS was great to have. I kind of wish I had access to one, but I no longer do. Um, Yeah, I played, I tried to, I played like literally all these Zelda games on the 3DS that came out for the 3DS. So yeah, those were some unique experience, but let's get into the next one. All right, so I had the Nintendo Wii U for a very, very short time. Um, There was just something that was not exciting about this console, and anybody that had this will agree with me. The, the Wii U just didn't have an, enough games on it to make everybody happy. It had some games. I remember I bought a, a game that was based around the Miis when I first got it, and I had Mario, I had, like, Sonic Racing. And that was really about it. I didn't even get too far into having this thing for like a year. Because there was just nothing coming out on it. I, I waited for a little bit. I waited a couple months. And I was like, why is there nothing coming out for this console that I really, really like? So, I didn't keep this console for very long. Um, Later on, after after I took it and exchanged it, uh, and because I didn't really care for it, I bought it with my tax return. And it was, like, not the best item I've ever bought in my life, gaming-wise. Uh, because Nintendo just had nothing out on this. I had, like, I played two games max on this. And uh, it wasn't enough to keep me wanting to play it. So, um, I, you know, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I got it when it was just, like, still new. But they didn't keep this console alive for very long. They they got rid of it, like, within a, within a couple years of it releasing. And it was just not worth having. You know, there's some features to it that I really say that I liked, but I didn't keep this console very long for a lot of reasons. So this leads us now up to almost to date. Um, so we'll get into the next one and then we'll finally be up to date where we are right now and talk about the experiences now compared to then. All right. So the Xbox One is still technically alive to this day. My first experience with Fallout 4 was on this thing. Um, I played Elder Scrolls Online on this thing. Uh, but I had a, I had a good variety of games on this thing, uh, but it wasn't something like I just fell into a spot where I just wasn't feeling playing video games anymore, and I wasn't feeling good in my life because uh, there was a lot of stuff I was going through, and you'll see that in me now that I still go through a lot of stuff solely because not because choices I made, but because of life choices that happen, things that happen, and just like. You know, I didn't. I, I I played all the Halo games, the remasters on this thing. Me and my friend ran through them at one point, my roommate. And um, beyond that, I I think I played a few other games, but I didn't keep it very long. Um, I I don't know. There was just something about it that just wasn't like it was fun, and I still wish I had one. But I ran into so many problems in my life where I you know. I've always struggled, and right now, you'll see that in my daily life, I tend to struggle with things like, uh, you know, um, it wasn't beneficial for me to keep it all, but I, you know, I had one at one point, and it's unfortunate that I had to, like, let it all, let it go, but uh, you see now that I'm trying to restore everything and regain all I own, because a lot of the stuff I owned along the way just got lost to people being ridiculously dumb and arrogant and very, very selfish to me. So you'll learn that as you pay attention to everything that I go through. You'll see that, like, I'm trying to rebuild everything. So that's what my main goal is. And just trying to rebuild everything kind of gives me at peace. Kind of gives me peace for some reason. And I can't really explain it. But, yeah, let's get into the next one. And we're about all, we're actually all caught up at this point. So, all right. So right now, I have the Nintendo Switch OLED. I have the original Switch, and I had the Switch Lite. I I got the yellow Switch Lite solely because there were games I wanted to play on the go. But I've never given away my Switch. This is the one console, I will say, that I still have to this day. Um, and it's because it's a console that was, like, for me, where I actually wanted to start my video game collection up again because a lot of my stuff got, had gotten lost. And I have Nintendo 64 back home. 
I have a Nintendo GameCube probably back home that just will not get sent to me because my mom just, again, being my mother and she doesn't want to send stuff to me. I'll ask politely, but she'll always give me some, like, really lame excuse. And and she likes holding on to past stuff, so that could be her problem. She's just holding on to the past too much. Um, But for me, this is where we're at right now. And I have a lot of great games on my back shelf here that you see when I'm talking. Um, the experiences on this are, uh, like, for me, just so unique that there's, the fact you can take this console out and go out with it uh, is really why I like it. Um, because it reminds me of having a Game Boy, the days of having a Game Boy, and being able to also have that console at the house. That's why these, that's why these devices are so great. So, um... You know, I, I've played Legend of Zelda. I, play, I have a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to be playing on this. I'm still trying to play some of it. Um, but yeah, the experiences with the Nintendo Switch are probably my best experiences because I still have everything that everything that I, you know, I had ever wanted in a video game console right here in front of me. Um, I do wish they would put the Street Pass back in. But let's get into this one last thing, and that is not so much a video game console, but what we're running on right now so all right so i am not this is not my pc my pc looks a lot more messier i'm not gonna lie this is not my pc but this is a brand new nice pc if i could afford a pc like this i would um but yeah pc gaming snuck into the snuck into my life at points and emulation snuck into my life at points that i made it into a thing of actually playing pc games from the pc my first real experience with Cyberpunk 2077 is on the PC. I had an experience playing Halo on the PC. The PC is that top-end gaming console that just nobody really talks about because they don't consider it as a console. But for me, a PC is a gaming PC is a console of its own, and you can switch out parts and all that. That's what makes it more superior than the PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch or even, you know, the Xbox, like, that's why you'll see me play Game Pass on my PC as opposed to playing it on a console. So, I think, at the end of the day, the best console in the world right now, to me, is always going to be the PC, even though I don't play many games on it, but when I do play games on it, it's a really enjoyable experience, you know? Uh, besides upgrade, having to upgrade the graphics card once in a while, you're getting a really great experience, and... You know, you're getting you're getting a lot for your value because you have access to multiple things on a PC. And one day I hope to downgrade from the PC to a laptop, make more room, and let the PC rest for a little bit. And um, my first major PC is the one we're running on right now, which is a mess. But it's my first real built PC that, if I could have the money, like couple uh, like a couple hundred dollars to invest in another PC, like at least a thousand i'd probably be happy and i'd probably end up building another pc i'm not saying i will anytime soon but i think when the time comes when i'm ready to upgrade i'm going to upgrade to a laptop and um just leave the just leave the bulky pc behind because the you know the days of pc building are kind of out of range for me because inflation and everything just going up it makes it harder to do these hobbies that you want to do and this was pc building is a hobby of mine but I don't do it as much as I like to because I, I can't afford to go out and continuously buy parts for the PC, you know. And I have people like li literally, you know, giving me the hardest time for building a PC. But PC building is great. If you have a chance to do it in your life, please do so. Um, but that leads me to where we're at now. And I'm going to give out, I'm going to leave, give my end thoughts and build the build this video. This video is going to be a little bit longer, I think. So let's get into, let's go back to the big screen so I can talk about my outro. Alright, so earlier on in the video, I did tell you I wanted to show you I had a Sega. So I still have a Sega right now. Um, I have the Sega 16-bit Model 1 with Sonic 2 in it right now. Um, but I've been keeping this safe because at some point I am going to want to play this again. Um, my original plan for this was to flip it, but because people really aren't interested in... Like, some people are interested in buying games, but some people see it as a, like... A really weird crime so i don't know what that's about but people are just weird in, in my life and yeah so um i'll show you what's behind the uh, uh, the camera here and what i play right now and what i have so let's get into that
All right, so I have an Xbox 360, which I haven't used too much because I haven't had found games for what I really like. What I own on a shelf for games are like just kind of stuff I acquired along the way and bought from people. Um, a Nintendo Switch, which are the Joy Cons right there, and my PC is what we're running off of right now. So, these are the consoles I use right now at this very moment. Alright, so there you have it. There's my history in video gaming. As you can see, I have a vast variety of game, gaming consoles I grew up on. Some I didn't play as much as others, um, and you can see that. But I have been playing video games most of my life. And this will definitely show you that I've been playing video games most of my life. Um, and, yeah, it was... It's a good time, man. It's a good, it's a good um, hobby to get into. It's, um, it has a lot of like nostalgia to it, um, you know. And I still remember some great games I played to this day that like they've always set well with me because of just the story in general and the plots and all that. So yeah, if um, if you're not a movie buff, uh, gaming would be the place for you because. Uh, you know, it's it tells stories like movies, but it's a it's a lot different than watching a movie because you interact with it. But yep, that's my uh, history in video gaming. I hope you all like this video. Um, I'll be back. A, I'll be back another day with some more content like this. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button. And also, please subscribe to the channel. I'm looking for subscribers right now. Along with, if you did subscribe and you do like the video. Hit the notification bell to get more from me, and I'll be seeing you next time. Take it easy, gamers.